Welcome to The Interesting Podcast, episode number 113. This episode is with Alex Damon, who you would know best as the man behind the YouTube channel Star Wars Explained. It was really cool to talk to him. Uh, We talked about how he actually learned to edit on After Effects and continues to do so to this day, which is very interesting. We also talk about how he was once an Eagle Scout. We talk about starting his channel, what that was like, and then seeing the rapid growth and how quickly it picked up, as well as the changes to YouTube since he's been on. We talk about his setup, the different equipment that he uses for his videos. We talk about uh, him studying for the Star Wars Trivia Contest at Dragon Con and how that was kind of the beginning of the channel. We go over different trivia questions that he's had, and most recently, he won. He is the current champion. You uh, get to hear that story. And also check out, he made a video about his journey to become the champion over all of these years. He finally won. It's a great video on his channel. Check it out on YouTube, Star Wars Explained. Alex is great. This was a really fun chat. So let's get right into it. Please enjoy the interesting podcast, episode number 113 with Alex Damon. Theme song time. Are you good at napping? I'm terrible at napping. Uh, I'm good when I've been up for almost 24 yeah. <laughs> hours. <laughs> I can't sleep on planes. That's I, I just can't do it. Oh, gotcha. Okay. What is the flight like from Atlanta to LA? Um, about four hours. It, it's not too bad, but yeah. when it's the red eye, it's like you're also having the time change, so it's like time oh. traveling. Oh, you took a red eye? I've never taken yeah. a red eye before. Is it as bad as it seems? I, I've taken plenty, and yeah, it, it's mostly just it feels weird <laughs> when you land, but it, it's not bad. Are there a lot of people on red eye flights? Um, there were a decent amount on this one. Really? Like sometimes you luck out and you get like a whole row to yourself, but sure, not this time. Wow, man! I I have this idea of red eye flights that's like in every movie where there's like you know the main character and then next to no one else because yeah. nobody flies at that time. I think every. I don't think I've ever been in an empty flight. Now that I'm trying to think about it, have you had a row to yourself before? I don't think I have. Uh, very rarely. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a joy when it happens. Yeah. <laughs> I always don't know like how I would react. Like, do you use the other seats? Like, oh you, yeah. Like out of principle, you have to, right? Uh-huh. Uh huh. Like Molly and I uh, had two. Or, yeah basically a row to ourselves it was three seats for the two of us and that also felt wonderful yeah <laughs> that's the way to travel that's the recommended space yeah it's look out and class. get an extra seat yeah there you go what what was uh where did the where was the event held this time for the uh, project it, luminous because it's either yeah, cons it in, or hotels or it was at the disney lot oh that's cool how yeah, was I'd that i've never been there before it, it was fine it yeah. was just like in a little <laughs> office building Sure, sure. Did you have to go through like the security to get onto the lot? Just a little. They took my ID, made sure I was on the list, and that was it. Nice. You were on a list, Alex. That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. (laughs) The the most exclusive of exclusives. That's pretty (laughs) neat. A lot of stuff happens on that Disney lot. Yeah, I assume so. (laughs) I was at the press event they did for episode nine, the one that was like two weeks before. Oh, yeah. And that was held at... Uh, the convention center in Pasadena. And I was like, okay. oh, and that was my first time doing any of those kinds of events, didn't know what to expect. Which, props to you. You're very good at actually telling people what's going on at the event. I am <laughs> terrible at it. Um, I was like, I have to pay attention. And they're like, no, you have to live tweet this thing so everyone else knows. So I was like, oh, right. That's why I'm here. Huh. It's a lot. <laughs> it was hard to keep up with the tweets. I bet. I bet. And, like, for you specifically, like, you have so much information coming in. You're like, oh, I got to remember this and all the stuff. And, like, that's a lot of work. Yeah. Did you know that you were going, like, beforehand? Like, did you have time to prepare for this? Um, I think I knew about a week beforehand. Oh, man. 
well, seems like you did all right. It was cool. Are you excited yeah. for it? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I am very happy about the, the High Republic and mostly just that the, the books and the comics are going to get to do their own big thing instead of just kind of follow the movies around. Yeah, that'll be cool. It gave me the kind of vibes of like the Knights of the Old Republic comics, like the John Jackson Miller ones from a bit mm-hmm. ago. It feels kind of like we're about to get into something like that. I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah, me too. So you're in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Are you from Atlanta? Yep. What's that like? It's cool. I love it here. It's like you get all the big city amenities without it being L.A. or New York. Yeah. Which I, I, I love the cities, but I'm always like, I couldn't live here. Yeah. Is it cold where you're at right now? Um, It's not too bad. It, yeah. It's probably the coldest it's going to get all year. Uh, oh, really? And then it's going to warm back up, but... It's, it's not terribly cold. Sometimes it snows here. Really? I was just about to ask how often it snowed. Because like, George, Georgia's like yeah. that middle ground between Florida where it never snows and like Tennessee where there's feet of snow. Right. Yeah, yeah it, it's like every other year. We got a little snow two weeks ago and it wasn't much at all. Oh, man. Do you like the snow? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's nice when you only get it rarely and it's kind of a treat. <laughs> That's true. I, I, I don't think I'd love it if I had to deal with it all the time. <laughs> That's true. If you had to shovel driveways and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It seems like a lot of work. Yeah. Where are you from? I'm in Florida, like okay. South Florida. So Naples, which is like, if you go all the way down and you see like Miami on the East Coast, go directly across to the West Coast and that's where I'm at. Cool. So I don't ever see snow and it's kind of nice. I'm from North Carolina, and it snows there sometimes, and it snows cold. Like ce- yeah. celebration last year when it snowed like the oh, last yeah. day, I was like, "Goodness, what is happening?" It's going cool. out to get to the Mandalorian panel, I was like, "What is going on?" Yes, yeah, standing in line, just getting covered in snow. Uh huh. You gotta want it. Well, I'm excited for this year's celebration. Yeah, me too. I wonder what they're gonna do. It's like the next phase of Star Wars. Should be neat. Yeah, hopefully. Like, I'm still, I want them to do one of those timeline things like Marvel does. Ooh, yeah, same. So I'm curious, because you've got this YouTube channel that you've had for a really long time. Was video production something that, like, you always wanted to get into? Or was that something you kind of fell into it? I think since around high school, uh, we started making little video projects for class. And I was like, I really enjoy editing. Uh, really and, yeah everything we made was really dumb but it, it, <laughs> they were fun to make and so we started making little movies for fun together and uh i think that kind of drove me to be like i might want to be in the movie industry and then i interned on a couple movie sets and i was like i don't think i want to be in the movie industry <laughs> <laughs> and so i kind of found a middle ground where i was uh working in video production for like uh, creative agencies around Atlanta, and then that taught me a little bit about SEO and video marketing and stuff like that. So nice. that kind of twisted into becoming a YouTuber. Right on. Which movie sets did you get onto? Uh, two really small films. One, I don't know if it even came out anywhere. It was like a real Southern movie called Grilling Bobby Hicks, and then the nice. other one was called Good Intentions, and that I know at least came out oh. on DVD and stuff. Right. Uh, that one had, like, Leanne Rimes and Luke Perry in it. Right, right. Like, uh, a bunch of people that I actually recognized, but it, it still was very small. Yeah. And then you realize, oh, these are very long days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of it's just set up and take down. It's, mm-hmm. pretty, it's pretty crazy. Like, one of those things where, like, you have this idea of something, and then you get to it, and you're like, oh, this is not at all what I thought. Which yeah. I imagine is pretty similar to being a YouTuber as well, because you see the video, you see the final product, you don't see the like hours and hours of stuff it took to make it. Bonkers. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think probably being a YouTuber is a little more uh, <laughs> easier to yeah. <laughs> guess what it's like. Sure. It's a smaller scale, for sure. Yeah, yeah. For sure. So what did you learn to edit on? Did you take classes to learn to edit, or you just kind of like messed with it and taught yourself? How'd that go? Yeah, just self-taught. Um, yeah. Lots of online tutorials yeah. before like YouTube was really big on that. Sure. So lots of After Effects and Premiere. Yeah. Okay, cool. You learned on Premiere. I mm-hmm. like I like Premiere a lot. That's actually what I edit my podcast on because I'm dumb. Oh, 
<laughs> well, I edit most of my videos in After Effects, so... Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you about dumb. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Man, After Effects is nuts. Yeah, I remember early YouTube was a lot of, like, martial arts videos and, like, uh, like VFX breakdowns and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Like, I remember going down the rabbit hole of, like, they clone themselves. Look at this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did it, so you edit in After Effects. That means you used After Effects beforehand. What were you doing in After Effects? Uh, doing stuff like you just said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cloning myself, figuring out how to do wacky effects and things like that. Doing lightsaber videos. Yeah, of course. Uh, and then, yeah, like a lot of my videos just use this plugin that I really like. Uh, or a couple plugins that are only available in After Effects. Mm -hmm. So... I'm just like, I guess I edit my videos on After Effects. And when I tell my friends in production that, they get furious with me because they're like, that's not what it's for. Yep, yep, yep. Exact same. I do podcasts on Premiere because I learned to edit video on Premiere. And then I did that <laughs> for a long time. And I'm like, it's what I know. I can make, it works. You don't know at the end. Exactly. Yeah, they don't know. We're on the same page. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a tool can be used for a lot of things. But I never, I tried After Effects. It's so, I don't know. It's just a language I don't speak. Because I, I did a video, same similar sort of thing, where like you're with your friends, you're like, what if we had lightning come out of his hand? Let's figure that out. And then you spend nine hours trying to mm -hmm. keyframe stuff, and you're like, still looks terrible. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> were you were you an Eagle Scout? Yeah, I was. That's really impressive, because I couldn't make it very far. My brother got pretty close. With Eagle Scouts, one, it takes you, you know, 18 years to get there. But two, a lot of people don't know is you have to do like an eagle project mm -hmm. at the end. What was yours? Um, I built a bunch of like these whiteboard easels for my old elementary school. Oh, so I, that's cool. I can't remember how many we built, but they, they were like these double-sided fold-out easels that could be drawn on, erased. Uh, you could put different things in the... I don't, I don't know what to call it, like not the screen, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> wherever the whiteboard was, it had, they had wheels and stuff. So yeah, we just kind of like built up an assembly line and put together a bunch of these easels. Oh, that's a cool idea. Yeah. I don't even remember how I found <laughs> that. <laughs> a strike of genius. That's how. I guess. <laughs> that's pretty cool. So then when did you decide like YouTube for real? Because the early days of YouTube... Everyone was just kind of doing everything in the same way that I feel like if there's any new social media platform like Vine or TikTok or anything, people are like, oh, just just jump in. But then it takes an extra part of your brain to like, oh, I'm actually going to try this thing. Do you remember yeah. what like what changed or what made you want to really go at it? Um, I think I saw the YouTuber comics explained. Nice. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, this guy literally is just talking about what he loves and knows about and his videos aren't that complex mm -hmm. uh and i was like yeah i think i could do that and he was talking about uh, he had just started going full-time and so i was like i i've got a full-time job but I, i've got this idea so I'll, I'll just start trying it yeah and maybe one day uh this will be a nice extra set of income or Maybe one day I'll get a silver button or something. So yeah. I just like, started doing it, and uh, people seemed to like it, and it, it grew pretty fast. I bet. It, it took about two years before I was. Bad. Yeah, before I was ready to say, "Okay, we can go full time." Sure. What was what were you doing at the time for work? Uh, I was working at a creative agency in Atlanta, nice. doing video marketing. Oh, perfect. Yeah. There you go. You had your own sort of kind of training. Mm-hmm. That's pretty good. One hand washes the other. In the grand scheme of YouTube, two years is fast. Oh, yeah. I I was <laughs> very aware of how quickly it was going. Sure. What? So when did when did that happen? When did you start? 2015. Uh, oh, perfect yeah, timing. Just over five years ago. It was like right at the start of 2015. Mm -hmm. I, I prepped, I guess, technically in 2014 a lot. I made a ton of videos. Uh, and I, I wanted to make sure I was ahead. I actually think I did um, almost a quote year's worth of videos for the time where like they were really simple and I just spent like all of December after work cranking these short videos out because at the time I was doing like one to two minute videos. Right. And 
I was like, I'm just going to schedule three videos a week for a year and then kind of oh. walk away and see what happens. Good Lord. <laughs> and yeah, I, it was just going to be kind of an experiment to see how it went. And so that first month, I basically didn't have to do anything. I was just kind of watching it go. Mm hmm. But I saw the reaction to it, and I was like, oh, man, I need to, like, I, I basically scrapped the rest of that year's worth of work. Because I was like, these aren't that good. Right. And I need to, <laughs> if people are actually responding to this, I need to step it up. Sure. Man, that is so much work. Yeah. <laughs> I did, I did video, I had a videography company for a little while, and I did weddings, commercials, and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And so editing for me was the worst part of it. Because that's where that's where the real work is, honestly. Like shooting is one thing, but like editing it is where it's made. And the fact yeah. that three videos a week? Good lord. Well, I mean more power to you, I guess it worked. I, I, I guess. <laughs> wow. What was your first video? Do you remember? Yeah, it was about Will Rowe Hood, the ice cream oh, maker guy. <laughs> beautiful. Beautiful. That's I mean, it's a great it's a great in. Because yeah, it's, like an so. it's an inside joke within the fandom of like, oh yeah, you know, Will Row Hood, and like it's a it's a buzzword. Yeah, I, I thought it was a good intro to what the channel was going to be about. That we're we're going to like dive into little niche things and have fun with it, and I'll tell you why this person became important, even though he's in two seconds of the background of one scene. Right, right. Great timing. 2015 with the resurgence of Star Wars been like oh we got episode 7 coming out which is the first phase of the comeback that, yeah that was on purpose <laughs> yep smart I'm seeing the marketing brain here <laughs> I'm picking up it, what you're laying down yeah uh, and it, I was also doing all of this to study for a trivia contest uh, that was kind of the inspiration for wanting to do it at all oh and, look at you <laughs> so, so there's a, a thing in drag or yeah there's a thing called dragon con it's a convention in atlanta yeah fantasy sci-fi it's all fan run and they have this trivia contest that i would always participate in and do okay at mm -hmm. and I, I was always like I, I can study i can study and i can do well and i could win this thing yeah uh, so that was kind of my driving force to research all of these characters and locations and stuff but at the time, the trivia contest was mostly Legends stuff. Right, right. <laughs> and then, of course it was. <laughs> yeah, and then in 2015, after I had done nine months of work really researching Legends, they were like, it's just going to be canon stuff now. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I love how your brain works. It's like you do everything, but it has like dual purposes. You're like, I'm doing this, but it also does this, and I'm going to do this, and it also does that. It's really, really interesting. I guess I try to be efficient. <laughs> yeah, efficient. That's a word that I don't get to use to describe myself very often. Uh, but, hey, is there a part of you that thinks, like, you're helping the competition by helping yeah. yourself as well? Or are you like, I, I, it's all right? <laughs> I mean, I, I got pulled into the movie Trivia Schmodown on YouTube as well, and, yeah. like, I'm the current champ. And yeah, you are. pretty much everyone I've competed against has said like yeah i used your videos to study and I was like, all right <laughs> so i keep threatening to put false information in there there you go just to mess with people that would be so funny if you like leave them up for like two weeks prior yeah <laughs> and then put them back down and be like yeah totally so like how good is your memory then if because you you put out so much information and it's so detailed as well because you're like star wars explain it's in the title like you're explaining star wars to people but how much information do you personally retain? Like, how much space is in your brain? Um, I, I think my memory's got to be pretty good, but only for weird stuff like yeah. this. I mean, like, I, I was always just good at Star Wars trivia, and yeah. I'm good at movie trivia, and I have friends who are, like, annoyed at how weirdly my brain works. Like, they'll just ask me, who, who was that person that was in that movie? And I, I'll just... I don't know. I can remember little trivial things like that. And Star Wars is so full of it that I guess my my brain can just retain it. And then especially when I'm researching something, I am reading about it and then I write about it and then I record the script and then I listen to it while I edit it. So like it just gets burned in there. Sure. You're like legit studying like people do for college 
exams. Yeah. That's pretty good. So that, when did your love for big start? Uh, that had to have been in 09. I think that's when I got uh, our, our dog, uh, Biggs. He, we, we got a beagle. We Amazing. rescued a beagle. And I, I just always thought Biggs would be a good name for a dog. It's a great name for and a dog. I did always kind of like Biggs and that I found him to be intriguing because I, I didn't know what deleted scenes were growing up. Mm -hmm. And I was like, it, it took me a while to piece together uh, that, that Biggs was the guy that Luke was talking about at the start of the movie. He's like, yeah, Biggs is right. I'm never getting out of here. And then there's Biggs at the end of the movie. Right. And I was like, you kind of learn the lore that he's Luke's childhood friend mm -hmm. and he's also from Tatooine and then you see these pictures of him on Tatooine wearing this dope cape yeah. and I'm like <laughs> where's this from and so I just started like researching more and more about him and I remember learning that there were scenes that were shot that weren't included in the movie and then they were on like this CD-ROM called Making the Magic but you had to unlock them in some weird way and me and my friend spent a lot of time learning how to <laughs> unlock them. And then we finally saw the scene, and it's not even that good. But, <laughs> like, but you it earned just, it. <laughs> yeah, right. And it, it, I think Biggs just kind of now I, I use him as like, he represents my first dive into Star Wars lore like that, where I, I didn't know anything about this character. And like he has this whole backstory, and it was fun to learn about so uh i think a lot of it started because i was like i'm gonna name my dog biggs but there was always some sort of connection to him yeah i love that and i love that it like almost sounds like the the brain idea genesis of like star wars explain because this was prior and you're like oh i like diving into this thing and learning these other things and then boom now you're just sharing it with everybody else yeah, I mean, I always, growing up, had those reference books, The Essential Guide to Characters and Planets and Vehicles, and uh, me and my buddy who lived down the street would just pour over that stuff. So sure, uh, I've, I've always been interested in all that. How many videos do you think you've made? Oh, I could tell you. Oh. Um, <laughs> I'm going to guess on the low end, 400? 400? trying to remember where to even find this number, but it's in like the 2000s. Ooh. All right. Well, I was close. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good Lord. Thousands of videos? Yep. Wow. That's a, that's a, that's a lot, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> that's a lot. So what was it like for you? 2103. There's, there it is. Good Lord. That's a lot. That's more than three a week. Yes, it is. You you outdid yourself. Yeah, we we slowly as I was like, okay, I can keep up at three a week. Then I bumped up to five, and then just over time it crept up to seven. And I was like, I guess we're doing one every day now. And Jeez. unfortunately, Man. that is like kind of what the YouTube algorithm wants. And right, it's it's not great for like creators who want to make something that has a lot more depth to it and a lot of production. Sure. Where it's like, I can only do this once or twice a month. And they're making great stuff, but the YouTube algorithm doesn't really serve them as well. Sure. So what was it like for you when it caught off? Like, did you feel a pressure? Because it's like this thing that you're like, I'm going to try this out, and then it just skyrockets. Did that change how you looked at it or how you approached it? Uh, I, I think it probably did. I yeah. mean, well, yeah, because when I even though I had done so many videos, I was immediately like, oh, I need to be better than this. Right, uh, yeah, people like, are actually watching. Yeah, I, I thought this would be a, an interesting little experiment and it quickly became more. So yeah, it, it did. I was at the start going to be like, and because I knew how the algorithm worked, I was going to be like, this is going to be quantity over quality mm -hmm. because I've got a full-time job and I'm going to just do my best to keep up with it. And then... Uh, when people were watching it, I was like, oh no, like I'm going to try to do <laughs> quantity and quality, right? Uh, which made it a lot harder, but uh, I, I think it was worth it. Yeah, I'd say so. 
I'd say so. You're doing all right. <laughs> People may or may not be watching your videos, which is pretty amazing. What is your process? Like, how do you come up with the ideas for your videos? Like, break this down for me. How, how does this work? Um, it, it's a lot easier when something like The Mandalorian or The Clone Wars or Star Wars Resistance is on. Like, I love having that weekly sure. uh, boost in creativity because it's like, all right, I know I'm going to review this episode on this day. Sure. Um, so I, I kind of see what is coming out and then try to schedule things around that, uh, reviewing books, talking about what happened in the most recent stories. And then if nothing is really coming out, I just focus on whatever's interesting to me in the moment. Nice. Where, yeah. Like I, I still want to make, and sometimes it's a struggle to think of what's something that I actually do want to talk about right now. Right. <laughs> Cause I've kind of run out of the, the the easy most interesting just like random characters mm -hmm. that i love so now i'm like uh scratching the bottom of the barrel on wikipedia right or like I, I nowadays i'm much more trying to talk about um theme i guess and mm -hmm. answering questions i'm sure it helps that like star wars is one of those things where like every character matters and every character has something so yeah. it's not like you're gonna one day have covered it all and be like, well, <laughs> all right, everything is here. Enjoy. Yeah. It's easy to come up with topics. It's more just like, it's hard to find something that I'm like really motivated to talk about that week. Yeah. Cause you don't want to be like, and then we had this ship. Yep. It does that, <laughs> I guess. And you know, just like the other one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when you, you, they're scripted, you script your videos. Mostly. Uh, I think we have a couple where it's like me and Molly sitting down and just talking and riffing. Yeah, that's weird. Uh, if uh, most everything else is scripted or at least has an outline. That makes sense. It it helps. Like uh, I, I'm on a show called The Dorky Diva Show with Savannah mm -hmm. on it. And Savannah is like a big fan of show notes. And yeah. I'm a fly by the seat of your pants kind of person. But she, you can tell people that have, or like Sky Talkers is another one. You can tell how much thought went into it, and like show notes and care. And your videos, I feel, are the same way. You're like, oh, this is, this is serious. Like you put some <laughs> real time into this. It's really yeah. Cool. I mean, uh, uh, there's another thing that I was trying to do when I started out was there weren't that many Star Wars YouTubers, not like there are now. Right. And it was uh, a lot of like kind of doing what I was doing or wanted to do, but they would take. 20 30 40 minutes to talk about a topic right and i was like i do not have the time to watch <laughs> this so like i wanted to just get to the point and uh my original idea was star wars minute not realizing that there was a podcast yeah. called that already <laughs> uh and so that they, they were super nice about it when i when i found out i reached out to them and i was like i'm real sorry guys and eventually i was like i'm changing my name anyway they've always been so nice about it but that's cool uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I wanted to do just like, let's get to the point, here are the basics about this person and why they're important or whatever. And that's still just how I am. Like, I, I don't want to waste time rambling about something. I just want to be like, here are my thoughts distilled and then we're done. So most of my stuff is like three to five minutes long. Right, right. Do you think there's a part of your brain, like the marketing side that kind of influences that? Because it makes it more palatable, the more bite-sized it is. Uh, yeah, I think so. But also, like, honestly, that's not great for the algorithm. They they really want to push watch time. Uh, so oh. the longer your videos, the better off you are. Really? So if, yeah, if I could do seven, ten-minute videos a day, that would be ideal. That's crazy. But I'd rather just focus. Yeah. And <laughs> sure. I, I, don't like to, I don't like to waste time. Do you find that the algorithm for YouTube has changed since you started? Because it's changed a ton since the beginning. For sure, yeah. Yeah. What do you find are some like, like common misconceptions people might not might have for people in the YouTube game? Um, I, I would say that YouTube really prefers. So yeah, you got your watch time. Mm -hmm. uh, you got your consistency. Uh, but I think the biggest thing is to drive emotion and uh that's why 
you see so many kind of rage fueled videos out there, not just in the Star Wars community, but like rage. You're just, right. It, it it does well on YouTube. Sure. It, they want to see like engagement with the video, and if you can elicit an, an emotional response. And anger is one that kind of gets both sides. Yeah, a little You'll bit. You'll get the people who <laughs> agree with you, they'll comment, and you get the people who really disagree with you, and they'll probably comment even more. Right. So <laughs> that's if that, I, I consider that to be basically like the dark side of YouTube. <laughs> right, right. I'm mad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's the quick and easy path, but oh, it's it's rough. Yeah, yeah. Talk about having energy for something. Where do you get that amount? Yeah, and, like, I think I only did, like, four videos in the series, but I was kind of trying to see some of these stories that people were mad about, and then I would try to explain (laughs) the the real side of it. And I found myself just being drained from seeking out (laughs) those types of videos and being like, oh, my gosh, i got to talk about that now. So I was like, that's not worth it. I feel like it'd just be so – it'd be so tiring. Just being like turned up to 11 on your emotions mm-hmm. so much, you know? And it's like, what do you get out of it? <laughs> like every day, you, you know that you have to be mad about something today. Exactly. And so like, you got to go find something. And like, what? What? Yeah, <laughs> no, exactly. For real. Speaking of better way to spend your time. So you get the script, you shoot it. What do you shoot on? Um, We've got a couple options. So I either have like my webcam and a green screen, or we've got a little set that we built in my office which is just a group of shelves and a bunch of star wars stuff on it love it um for that we have a canon i want to say 70d out of molly is the one that knows all of the technical specifications and how to actually right shoot. on like I, I don't really know how to handle a camera sure sure um and then I, I think most of my stuff is just voiceover so we just have a zoom and a microphone Oh, nice, nice. That's also what I use. Zooms are great. Oh, yeah, I love mine. Yeah, like the greatest investment ever. And then you edit in After Effects? Yep. <laughs> nice. Do you remember a video that, like, took longer than others before? Like, when you look back on it, you're like, this one was a little bit, just a little bit extra, and I remember you. <laughs> I guess the one that jumps out to me is one that I do every year now, and it's the, the complete the timeline. Video. Yeah. And I, I did that for Legends first, uh, and oh boy, yeah, I think I did that in 2016, mm-hmm. and I knew it would be big, but like, oh, especially <laughs> at the time when I didn't really have a workflow for something that big, right? That, that was rough but fun. I I should do that again, maybe. Like, I agree. Do that specific video, um, yeah, because I bet I could do it better now, and like. Now I'm doing it every year for the canon. Just like whatever new was added, we'll put those stories in. Right. But I've kind of got a workflow for that now. But that yeah, that first Legends timeline video, I think that was like 45 minutes long, easily the longest thing I had done up until that point. Goodness. That's almost feature length. It's like halfway there. <laughs> well, canon, I guess, is going to get there eventually. I bet. It, I mean, they're continuing. Do you have like like a like a map with strings and thumbtacks when you're like all right this connects to this and this goes here <laughs> um like how do you keep track of everything that's a good question <laughs> I, I think i just do my best yeah <laughs> I mean, to that's keep fair. it in my head like i mean i when i read a book for example yeah i usually i have the book and um if it's a review copy Mm-hmm. one that i don't really care about i'll highlight in it if it's like my nice. legit copy uh i'm not gonna <laughs> right yeah <laughs> <laughs> I treat them preciously so if it's a, a legit copy then i sit there in front of my computer and anytime i see something that i'm like that sounds familiar i'll just wikipedia it real quick mm-hmm. um or if i know it for sure i'll just add it to like a list of facts and stuff that i know this connects to this other book and so i, I kind of just do it for each story as it comes out but yeah other otherwise i just do my best to keep it in my head and like i forget stuff like we were laughing uh in this first episode of the clone wars that came back admiral trench is in it 
Yep. And I had completely forgotten that he was in season six at all. <laughs> so I was like laughing about how, oh, Admiral Trench is back and no one seems to care or no one's surprised. <laughs> like he blew up in season two and no one is like, where did he come from? <laughs> but right. I was like, oh no, he's been back for a season. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Do you do you find that you spend more time on the production side of it, like writing it, shooting it, and editing it, or in the research part of it begin in the beginning? I guess the writing is probably the one that I feel like takes the most energy. Yeah. Because, um, like, recording is just reading. Editing is pretty easy for me right. uh, with my workflow. But, yeah, the, the researching and the writing take the most time. Yeah. Do you have a favorite video that you've done that you're like super proud of? Oh. Uh. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I get you comfortable and then I'm like, mm, take that. I the the Canon timeline videos. Yeah. The ones that back at. <laughs> like those those are the ones that take the most effort every year. Yeah. Uh I'll, you know, I'll I'll just look at my most viewed videos real quick and see if anything jumps out at me. There you go. There you go. You have two over 2000. I don't know if you know that. Um, yeah. So, you know, you've got you've got options. <laughs> okay, here's a good one. Yeah. Uh right before The Force Awakens came out, mm -hmm. uh there was a short story uh called The Perfect Weapon. Right. And it's it's about yeah, Bazine Natal mm -hmm. retrieving a package for some unknown clients and I think that they really hint strongly that the unknown package is Darth Vader's helmet. And I believe she's delivering it to Kylo Ren. And it's kind of this thing where, yeah, you do have to take the string out and say, okay, this connects to this. And then, like, you, you got to figure out how to get there. Yeah. But I did it and made a video about that. And that was my first video that really took off, uh, broke a million views. Nice. And I, I was really proud of, you know, finding, connecting those dots and, it it just worked out that it was right as The Force Awakens was coming out. Sure. I feel like you're filling in a good need as well because a lot of people, especially nowadays, I feel like don't have a lot of time or at least use that as an excuse to not do the deep dives. And then you're mm -hmm. the one that like dives into the ocean, grabs the pearl and comes back and you're like, look, and they're like, a pearl, you know? Like, <laughs> so you're doing like all of the the actual like footwork to get the information and then you give it back to the people as like, enjoy it's pretty neat it's a good it's a good service you provide oh thanks especially something like do you so you read books as opposed to listen to them yeah uh i i like audiobooks but like the the dooku jedi lost audio drama um i liked that a lot but yeah. it's a lot harder for me to retain the information i, I guess i'm a better visual learner mm -hmm. so uh yeah i prefer to read or Ideally, I would read and listen to the audiobook at the same time, nice. but usually uh, we just have the book before the audiobooks come out, so I just I just read it. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Do you have a favorite thing from the old EU and then from the new Star Wars? Like, just favorite anything? Yeah, like comics, books, things like that, like anything that you're like, this is my deal. Um, well, I my favorite... Star Wars books are still probably the old yeah. X-Wing books. Oh, perfect. Because I, I love pilots. Yeah, makes sense. If, if we can't have Biggs Dark Lighter, I'll take Gavin Dark Lighter. There you go. There you go. Uh, yeah, the, the, the X-Wing books, the Darth Bane trilogy, Darth Plagueis. Uh, and of course, I have a soft spot for the original Thrawn trilogy. Yep, yep. And the thing I'm probably most obsessed with right now in the new canon, it, it might be my favorite thing since the Disney purchases uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. I yeah. fell in love with it. <laughs> Pretty great. Yeah, I, I thought it was just going to be a fun game, like a cool action game wrapped in lightsabers and starfighters and stuff. I wasn't expecting the story to be as Star Warsy as it was, as in, like, we're going to teach you good lessons about growing up and uh, getting over your past and, like... I don't know. The story just really resonated with me. Yeah. It also just had so many twists and turns. Like, I, I played the second half of the game in one night, and my <laughs> mouth was just on the floor the whole time. Oh, yeah. 
dude, playing through Order 66 is even more heartbreaking. And then, yeah, oh, yeah. The, whole, the whole turn with Vader showing up, you're like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a good game. I like it a lot. I feel the same way. I Because I wasn't sure how they were going to attack it and, like, how, like, I don't know. The term isn't right, but like how one player it was gonna be, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like have it be narrative, and it would, uh it exceeded a whole lot of expectations, and I dug it. Yeah, it's it's great. So was there in the last few years? You said you've done the the trivia contest. Are there questions in the past that you lost to that you have a vendetta against? Yes. Okay, <laughs> I I need uh, to hear them. That's uh, anytime I miss a question. Especially if I lose on it, yeah. uh, I'll make a video about it. <laughs> really? <laughs> as penance. But the one that I really hate is uh, Dragon Snake. Dragon so Snake. I, I, I won the contest for the very first time last year in yes. 2019. Congratulations, I've been doing it by for the way. seven years. Thank you. I've been trying for seven years and I finally won it. Goodness. Uh, I think two or three years before that, uh, I got down to the top three. And the question was, what kind of creature uh, eats and then spits out R2 on Dagobah? Oh. And I knew it was dragon, and I wrote dragon serpent. Oh. And the answer is dragon snake. And the other two people got it. Oh, and, no. And the, the judge was like, ah, he, he like wanted to give it to me, but I mean, they got it exactly right. So it's like, it's fine. And right. so I, I sat down. The very next question, uh, they didn't know it, and I knew it. So if I had just written oh, Snake, I, I would have won man. three years ago. Sure. Good so yeah, goodness. dragon snakes uh, can go to hell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel the same way about the word receipt. Because uh, mm-hmm. that, that was a word that I lost a spelling beyond in like seventh grade. And I was like, you. I, I, llama is, is my word. Llama? Yeah, that's the yeah. one that did it. Receipt? Uh-huh. Dude, I just learned to spell restaurant last year. <laughs> <laughs> And right now, my current nemesis is guarantee. Uh, <laughs> still can't do. Still can't do guarantee. The first try. It's the worst word. Like, where's the? Where is the? Where's the U in the beginning? It's not there. <laughs> it's guarantee, not guarantee. It's the worst. <laughs> it's the worst. So what? What kind of questions are in a Star Wars trivia contest? How do you possibly study for something like that? Um, I I'll tell you, I don't really study for the Dragon Con one anymore because that is everything. It yeah. is the movies, the books, the comics, the video games. Like that competition is designed to be absurd. Yeah. Uh, so the night before, if you want to com- uh, participate, you have to take a written test. It's a multiple choice, fifty question test, what? and then the top ten get to go up on a panel and uh, answer questions there. No way. Once you're in the top 10, it's meant to be like, we're going to punish you for being nerds. And the guy right. that writes it is a super <laughs> nerd. Like, it's all in good fun. Right. He'll, like, every year he does a round all about Jar Jar. And, like, you just got to know Amazing. tiny details about Jar Jar. And I love it. So that one, I'm like, there. it's impossible to really study for that. Right. Uh, the movie Trivia Schmodown, it's more, like... It's all movie trivia, so we just watch the movies uh, and take notes and write down what we think could possibly be questions. And I don't know, like I, I don't, I don't even know how we study anymore. It's just like we write down <laughs> this random stuff. I, I was actually laughing at the Dragon Con trivia this past year because he, the the guy, was asking his questions and. It, He's just like listing off these absurd names, and I started laughing because I was like, I can't believe people fight over this franchise. <laughs> it's so silly. But it is. Yeah, I, it's just kind of a guess, and it's a lot of questions about who's this background character, what was this person's call sign, like right. anything random you can think of. We just put it in a Google Doc, and then I quiz myself. Smart. Are they, with the movie ones, are they, like, all in the movie itself? Or do they rely on, like, the extra stuff where, like, oh, that's what that is. Like, the dragon snake thing. That is not mentioned in the movie, but it is the answer. Yeah, they are now getting to the point where they have to go into visual dictionary, Wikipedia territory. It used to be only if it's mentioned in the movie. Um, But they've since started to get away from that. Yeah. 
that's kind of what I want them to do. Like, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I like that a lot more instead of they were kind of getting to the you could see that the guy writing it was struggling to think up interesting questions. And it was a lot of like, who said this or right? I, I, what color was this thing? And that's not really what I study. It's very difficult, but like, I, I don't try to figure out like, okay, well, what color is this character's eyes? It's more <laughs> like what, what ship model or what, what was the name of this random star destroyer that, that like, I, I really live in the, the stuff that you have to read about and you would never know from just watching the movie. Right. Right. I like that. It's, it's an interesting thing. Like star Wars fans. I feel like we have this like other side of our brain that likes the research side. Mm-hmm. You know, we're like, check this, this also means this. It was Vader's helmet in the box. We're like, Oh really? Tell me more. Yeah. I like that. There's trivia contests and stuff like that. I like that. It's in good fun. And also that like, I feel like the more obscure they get, like you're saying, where they kind of get off the beaten path, it almost, it's got to feel even better when you win because you're like, yeah, I earned this. You know what yeah. I mean? What, what are some like of the hard questions that you feel like were real accomplishments? Do you have any that stick out? Because as a kid, like, I, I don't know if you do this, but I remember with friends, like to pass the time, we would just ask each other Star Wars trivia questions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've definitely done that, and not even as kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I may have done uh, it last year waiting for the movie. You know, it is what yeah. it is. You got to pass time. You know, it's research. Uh, the, the question that's jumping out at me right now. Okay, I got two. Uh, just because this, the question that I won the Dragon Con trivia on last year yes. uh, was what is the name of the song that the Cantina Band is playing in A New Hope? Uh, and I have like a slumdog millionaire backstory for <laughs> why I knew that. Like, and it was just me and my friend who I mentioned before that we read all those uh, essential guides together. Yeah. I remember him pointing it out to me one day and he was like, the song's called Mad About Me. And I don't know why, but I always yeah. just like, it was still in my head. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I said that since I was eight, but I, I just remembered it immediately. Um, and the last showdown I was on, uh, I feel like every single time I've competed, there's been a question, at least one, where it's something that Molly specifically quizzed me on. That's amazing. And this one was, how many horns does Darth Maul have on his head? Which, again, oh. that's not something that I would normally think about as like a Star Wars trivia question. But yeah. Molly just like counted one day and put it in there and she, she was like, one day they're going to ask this and kept hammering it. <laughs> and so like they asked the question and everyone in the audience goes, Ooh. And I immediately am just like 10 <laughs> and everyone's like, what the hell? You're like Alex Damon, Star Wars explained. Peace out. That's yeah. pretty, that's pretty cool that you have Molly as well, that she's like your coach almost. Mm-hmm. You know, like shoots the stuff, knows the technical sides. That she's like the perfect wingman, that yes. is like elevating the whole thing up there. And then you're like, oh yeah, it's a coach, it's a coach. You're Rocky, and then she's the other guy, <laughs> Nikki. Or yeah, Paul. yeah, both. Why not? She's the combination of them all. That's really cool and really special to have someone like that. Oh yeah, it's insanely helpful. And uh, in the videos that she's in, yeah, uh, she's great. I, I remember, yeah. Uh, one of my favorite comments we've ever gotten is like, uh, I like having Molly on the channel because uh, now the videos are entertaining and fun. <laughs> <laughs> or, no, 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 educational and entertaining. That's right. how they, so I was like, okay. <laughs> I mean, I get it. Cause I'm very much like, I'm here to answer a question. And then Molly will introduce like things that we can riff on. Sure. Sure. You're there That's, to explain. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. It's always been collaborations. Always better. That's I pretty, agree. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So you use the Zoom is the only mic that you use? You don't have like another uh, do you have an attachment into the Zoom? Oh yeah, like we have XLR mics. Nice. Same. We Same. we just use it mostly as a recorder. Gotcha, gotcha. What advice would you have for like YouTubers nowadays? Cuz I feel like we're in this section now where like it's not about catching waves anymore. It's about trying to get onto the already tumultuous ocean and trying to find one to ride. Like what yeah. would you have what advice would you have for someone who wants to get into the YouTube game? Um, I mean, I see a lot of people say like, don't, don't do it. Don't be a YouTuber anymore. And I don't like you, you can't do it. And I disagree. It's 
yeah. harder than it used to be. Definitely. Especially like Star Wars as a bitch has uh, become a lot more competitive. Oh, yeah. But like you can still do it as long as you love what you're talking about and you're passionate. Like you'll find an audience. And I would just say um, try to go for watch time if you can. If it makes sense for your content, try to go a little longer. Uh, set a schedule and stick to it. Be consistent, even if, if it's not daily, if it's not weekly, but just say like for your audience, hey, I'm going to upload every other Wednesday and then just make sure you do that. Yeah. And I think the biggest thing is probably try to get into the community and like reach out to other creators like we're all happy to work with people if they're making good content. So if, if you think your videos are great, like reach out to someone else who you like and respect. I mean, I remember my biggest subscriber day was because I emailed Mr. Sunday movies, who's a huge nice. movie YouTuber and uh, just offered my services if he ever wanted them. And he was like, this is perfect. I'm taking a vacation and like, the Force Awakens is about to come out, so you can just make a video and yeah, perfect. put it on my channel. And so we did that, and like that got me a ton of exposure. So just, I mean, it doesn't hurt to ask people right. if you can collaborate with them. That makes sense. Even in old YouTube, that was like the big thing, was like mm -hmm. collaborations between YouTubers. When people would show up in each other videos, you're like, what? Yep. It was nuts. So how many subscribers do you have now? Got to be a lot. Uh, yeah, we just broke 600,000. Oh man, that's a lot of people, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> did you did you get a button? Do they make buttons? Yes. When did, yes. What, what are the milestones for the buttons? Uh, you get silver at a hundred thousand, and uh, a million is gold. So that's my my next one. Nice. Is it is the silver one cool? Is it heavy? Not really. I mean, I like it. I I honestly like the old design. Now you get kind of a a silver plaque or a gold plaque. I kind of liked the buttons that came in a frame but <laughs> oh they don't do buttons anymore yeah like instead it's it's a big kind of plate that has a button etched onto it oh that's not as cool i i, I agree i like yeah. the, the frame <laughs> but whatever interesting i always wonder because i remember when they started sending those out and they're like a but it almost looks like when you get like um like a recognition trophy for like a company you know, it's uh -huh. like best regional manager, and it's like made of glass. What are they made of? Um, I don't know, because I've never opened up the frame. Oh, smart. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Okay. I know that I'd have to watch it again, but there's a, a channel called What's Inside, and so oh. they, they would they all they did was like cut something open, and they would explore what was inside of it. Genius. And it's like a it was originally a science fair project with a, a kid and his dad. And that's cool. The, like they just kept like people kept watching it. So when they got their silver button, they sawed it in half and they're like, here's what's inside. <laughs> like, I think it's, I think it's solid metal of some kind. What? I am 100% going to watch that video. That sounds cool. It's like, I remember an old YouTube channel that was called, is it a good idea to microwave this? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Convoluted title. Like now it would be like, does it microwave? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this was like old school, like when Playlist <laughs> really Live funny. first started. And they would like, they would have ratings. It was like, good idea, kind of good idea, definitely a bad idea. And, <laughs> and like anything you can think of, they would just put it on mic. They went through so many microwaves. That's was hilarious. Insane. Back in the Wild West of YouTube. Yeah. Do you even have time to like absorb content? Like what kind of stuff are you into on top of the massive amount of work that you do? Yeah, I mean... I, I think I mostly consume Star Wars stuff, but yeah. we, we still watch our weekly like sitcoms, Brooklyn Nine Nine or The nice. Good Place when it was on. Um, I blew through The Expanse season four in one day when it came out. So I mean, nice. it's it's mostly other genre type stuff. Yeah, of course. And then you started improv recently. How's that been? Yeah, I started that um, a little over a year ago, yeah. and it, it's fun. Like that's kind of my big way to just blow off steam and it does help with the channel tangentially but mostly it's just a fun stupid way to go like meet friends and be dumb together and blow off steam yeah good like, outlet. I, don't really, I don't really have a goal with it it's just something that i now enjoy doing 
Sure. A bunch of people I've talked to that do actually literally anything have talked about how like improv builds into other things at the very minimum, like confidence. And then it kind of just makes life more fun and able to tackle other things. Yeah. It, like I'm still working on being okay, being just stupid in sure. front of people. Like I, I feel like I'm very straight laced and like uh, I'm comfortable being stupid among my improv class. But then like once you're doing it in front of, an audience it's a little harder and like i'm still trying to get there on the channel as well and that's kind of like uh when i say that molly would try to riff on things with me there have definitely been times in the past where i would just block it yeah. and not not on purpose but just sure. be like now we're here to answer a question right yeah now, we are like, working <laughs> right now i try to yes yeah, I answer it and say like yeah let's play with this idea for a little bit and uh, oh I think a week ago she said something and I like blocked it and moved on. And then like we did our second question and I realized what I had done. I was like, let's re-record that question because I feel, <laughs> I feel bad about what I just did. I was not being a good scene partner. <laughs> sure. Sure. I mean, things you learn, things you learn. You don't know until you know. Yeah. Do you have any other like YouTubers that you like? Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I really like watching um, Patrick Willems, Mikey Newman. Nice. Uh, they, they're I like their takes on film. They're they're just more general film people. Yeah. Uh, and it's nice to see someone talk about movies that aren't Star Wars. Sure. Um, even though they do cover Star Wars, and I like their takes on Star Wars as well. But mm -hmm. um, in the Star Wars world, I really like Hello Greedo, Eckert's Ladder. I mean. I, I always struggle with this, like thinking up names off the top of my head and then I'll feel bad. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> they they are... know in their hearts. Yeah. They get it. <laughs> yeah, I'm always curious, like if any sort of community, like podcasters, I, I like to ask podcasters, like what podcast do you listen to? Because it's neat to see like the kind of communities that people are in, uh, mm -hmm. especially ones that like put out content, you know, like if there's sort of influences and like things that you enjoy and like, oh, I can kind of see that. It's It's pretty interesting. Also, my my favorite podcast that is kind of a marriage of what we were just talking about, improv and Star Wars, oh. uh, it's, it's called Mission to Zix, and it's an improvised science fiction, although I would probably put it science fiction fantasy podcast. Wow. It's very Star Wars influenced, uh, and, and they basically are just making up this story of a, a little crew on a ship that's exploring the galaxy and fighting tyranny, but it's very funny. Uh and they they all have their kind of own they have their own version of the Jedi Knights and their own version of the Force. Oh. But whenever they have a guest on, the guest kind of just gets to make up the rules. So the first time they had an old Jedi Master uh, come on, he just made up uh, this thing called the space, and so that's the Force <laughs> now. And they were like asking him questions about it, and he's like, "Well, there instead of the light and dark side, he called it the fresh and the whack." <laughs> and like so that that is now their reality and they're like yes we have a thing called the space and you want to be fresh and you don't want to go to the whack side and that is like hilarious. they treat it so seriously it's so much fun <laughs> that sounds great what was that called mission to zix z-y-x-x -X. mission to zix 100 percent getting into that and just like that can you believe we've been talking for an hour already yeah. dude this was cool i i appreciate you taking the time to chat with me and whatnot yeah, that was a fun chat. It, it didn't go by very quickly. Sweet. Though, before I let you go, I got I to gotta ask you, where can people find you online? Where can they find your stuff online? Talk to me. Uh, yeah, the biggest place is on YouTube. Uh, our channel is called Star Wars Explained, and we're on Twitter and pretty much everywhere else as Star Wars Explained. So uh, we're pretty easy to find. Yeah, speaking of SEO, get it. Yeah. I love it. And...
show, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at brianbalance.com. That's balance with two L's. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps. Let them know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. Also, I made a Patreon. So if you'd like to support the show and get access to other exclusive shows about a bunch of random things, you can now do that at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Logan, Victor, JC, and Christina. Your support means so much to me, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.